My name is Lorraine O'Connor, I'm a person of Muslim Sisters of Error. Um, the organisation was established in 2010 and it was established, the idea of Muslim Sisters of Error, and actually the name came over a cup of coffee between um, three women, myself, Jasmina and another friend of mine, an Irish Muslim woman, Patricia Fitzpatrick. My name is Jasmine, I'm the Vice Chair of Muslim Sisters of Error. Um, I have been involved in Muslim Sisters of Error since the very beginning, 2010. Um, at different stages on different levels and I'm originally from Australia, married to an Irishman, migrated here in 2009 and I've got three kids. We decided to try and start this organisation to see the needs of Muslim women in Ireland because being a Muslim woman myself I could see that there was needs there uh, that weren't being met and that there were women that had amazing credibility to them but they weren't going out and doing what they needed to do. So we were looking into the voluntary sector and I had worked in the voluntary sector for five years and came up with the idea let's put this experience into something practical and move forward with it. So that's where the idea came up. I just started by cooking just a hot food, that's it. But one day when I dropped the food myself there, <coughs> then I saw a long queue of volunteers and long queue of people who were standing there for waiting for the food and everything, you know. I uh, went to a conference that's called Inspire Me, um, and it was all about breaking down stereotypes. So I went <coughs> to the first conference they had, and they had a slideshow up about the homelessness. And immediately after the conference, I said, I would like to get involved in this. And I gave my name, and the very mm -hmm. next week I went, and I didn't know what to, what to make or what to do, so I was asking, what do I bring, <laughs> how do I cook, you know? So I just made sandwiches, took that, and looked, did the sandwiches a few times, but then it became summertime, and most of the people that used to cook go away on holidays. And he needed more cooks. So Lorraine didn't know I could cook. <laughs> that, like, this is the can you cook. And we, I started cooking. And since then, I'm still cooking, you know. Yeah. And then Dodana used to see I'm doing it. She yeah. got food to me and I used to bring it in. So I said to her one time as well, um, why don't you just come in? See for yourself how it is, you know. And she's never stopped since then. Yeah. So. Initially was a group of Muslim women at the very start. And that's when we had our logo done and what have you. So that's the foundation of it. About eight years ago we started in my home doing a soup, a soup kitchen kind of. We used my kitchen, all the sisters would come and they'd make sandwiches, tea, coffee, soup and we'd send it out in flasks and hats, scarves and uh, gloves. So we have a WhatsApp group in Dublin 15 and you have two women who are head of that group. They collect all the hot food, all the cooking and they bring it all there on a Friday night. They also look after their side of it. They look after uh, the, all the cups, sauces, plates, napkins, all that kind of stuff that's needed. We are just preparing uh, stuff for soup run tomorrow uh, outside GPO for homeless we do there. And uh, the four six foot tables are there, three flasks for tea and coffee, our high US bags and our First aid kids and gloves, yeah. we take hygiene very, you know, yeah. serious there because we all have to wear gloves and everything, you know, and we get ready for that. The hub is our office, uh, sorry, our storage room where all the sleeping bags, hygiene bags, everything that's needed will be going on Friday night from them. We do this every Friday. Friday, Friday yeah. In front of GPL. Yeah. From um, 6.30 to 9.30 we yeah. are there. So then I started thinking, okay, what other way can we do it? So I did a bit of research and I got in contact with Merchants Key. And Merchants Key do is, uh, uh, run a project called Chef of the Day where you can go in and take over their kitchens, but you have to donate everything, all the food, all your volunteers from scratch, you do all the cooking and you serve them. So the first time we did that would have been about five, six, year, six years ago. So that was a great success. It's increasing and it's yeah. getting bigger and bigger. And people have been so generous and helping us all the time. And especially uh, we love when people just stop by and say, can we volunteer here? Can we serve food? Mm. And they have their things with them, you know. Yeah. And people just come by and uh, say, can we donate something because yeah. we're doing good work or, you know. And that's what we're just doing it out of love. When I came up to finishing in 2010 and the five years of kind of preparing myself was 
to take the next step for Muslim Sisters of Era to be formed to the reason why we were formed was my agenda, my mission statement, and the vision I had in my mind was to break this stereotype. And we come to our table, we've got Christians, we've got people who are Hindu, we've got people of no faith, we've got people of different lifestyles, different backgrounds that choose to help us out and volunteer in our projects. We did have pockets of um, Pakistani women who'd stay with themselves, Arab women who'd stay with themselves, Bangladesh women who'd stay with themselves. So let's take them all out of their little, you know, kind of, safe circles and see, let's come together, let's make a bigger impact and let's educate Irish society into seeing the real part of Islam and what mus Muslim women are really about. So that's where, and that's how it started. You have a small pocket of people which you will always have in every country that will cause trouble, but they don't necessarily represent the voice of the nation. Now in the beginning it was hostile, we did get a bit of nasty comments, but we just kept going. And again, it's determination. It's sheer determination to keep going. I think if anyone sees anyone different, it's either fear or it's not known. I mean, I got told, you f when, when there, some people realised that I was Irish, then I was told, ah, here, you forget where you came from and you forget where you were raised. And I'm going, no, I didn't, you do. As I said, when I put on my scarf, society um, kind of took my identity. I never wanted my identity to change. I changed my fate. I didn't change who I was. I did join various groups, you know, like uh, yoga groups, Pilates, mothers, mothers to be groups and what have you. And you would try and kind of break the ice and hello and speak, but the conversation doesn't kind of go past the doors of the venue that you're at, you know, whereas some mothers would kind of meet up afterwards and what have you. So I kind of wondered, you know, what could that possibly be? Now there's nothing tangible to say that it was that I looked different, but there's an assumption there, I suppose, you know, definitely wasn't a language barrier, mm -hmm. you know, or anything that we had in common that we were both expecting. Now there has been one or two occasions where something would have happened and I would have been, say, a little bit racially abused. In a matter of seconds, the homeless guys step in and get rid of them. Don't you say that to my sister. That's what they call me sister down there. The nice part is also we have the God of presence. So if anything happens, they're always around. I remember one of the very first times I went to the table. Now the table was very well established before I physically joined, right? Um, there was one man, he, he literally stood right in front of me and he kept staring at me. And then he was talking in German and it got louder and louder and more offensive. Now he didn't know I understood German. And I'm letting, I'm letting it slide, trying my best to ignore him, but then he, he leant forward across the table. He's sorry, so I'm pointing his finger at me consistently. And his words got a lot stronger and they were quite offensive. I had no choice at that point. I had to answer him back. So I answered him back in German. Now my German was what I learned eight years ago in school, but it was still somewhere at the very back of my mind. And I basically told him that I'm an immigrant just like he is. However, immigrants like me and the people behind me have more of an impact than him. And if he doesn't stop, I'm going to have to call the guards. So he carried on. I called out the guards. The guards came over and removed him. Now, towards the end of that day, he came over. He did the cross sign and he was basically saying, please forgive me, please forgive me. I didn't know what I was saying. Um, now, he wasn't German. I, he, I believe he could have been gypsy because he mentioned something about being a gypsy. But basically he was saying that he had a hard time and he had nowhere to go and in German they had a big immigration problem because there's a lot of Muslims in Germany. That's what he was telling me. So I basically told him, look, not to worry, there's Muslims here, there's Muslims everywhere, good and bad, and people are doing what they can to help and we're here to help you and you're welcome here anytime. Um, but unfortunately it did have to have the guards to remove him because he was coming close not only to me but to our volunteers. The growing um, organisation of Muslim Sisters of Era has grown so big and the demand for the organisation not only in media coverage or television coverage, um, integration, diversity, homeless runs that we do, conferences, um, we hold uh, support with refugees, we go out to direct provision centres, so the whole um, impact of Muslim Sisters of Era is growing and I manage every one of them projects with a fantastic team as well but it's running all them projects and then maintaining the office and making sure the office is running as well. At present our main aim is to do what we can where we can to improve the this, this situation that people are going through in Ireland. So at the moment it's the homelessness. 
Um, at one stage, it was working with refugees, which we still do. I love doing it. I'm yeah. doing it now for going on to three but years. You can see the amount of things and the variety of the stuff people just give us, you know. It's <coughs> all donated, all donated. And it's keep on coming. There's a great sense of family and belonging down there. And you know what, uh, it's so funny because I don't serve. The girls run that, I stand out. And I'm like looking for, uh, you know, the real Joel Soap who needs really help. I was walking behind the table and I had accidentally knocked one of the homeless guys by accident just because it's a very tight situation. And I went up to him and I said, look, are you okay? And he grabbed me and he was like, oh my God, you guys are angels. You actually stopped to care. You know, thank you so much. Not only are you f you're feeding us, but you're treating us like human beings. Like He was just going on and on um, about how he felt about us being there. So there is, you experience the positive and the negative, but at the moment, and I'm sure Lorraine will get into it with you, their attitudes towards us is so positive. You know, they're really appreciative of us. And not just of us, there are other soup runs there um, that are there during the week. Some are Irish groups, some are basically uh, people from, <laughs> I'm my words now, um, people from different backgrounds as well. So I think people are starting just to see that it's just people helping people. You know, not an immigrant helping an Irish, you know. When people ask me, why do you do it? I say back to them, I have gained an amazing gift and I've trust, trust from the homeless. We are prepared for at least 200 people, person to more than, you know, 350. So we are all prepared for them, for serving them, you know, so. Every year, um, Culture Night, well, for the past couple of years has landed on a Friday night and people say, what's Muslim Sisters Vera doing for Culture Night? And I say, well, we're down outside the GPO. You just need to come down there and have a look at what we're doing um, by feeding the homeless. You have a huge, diverse background of sisters, women, sorry, from every different culture. And we're providing the services. So instead of doing something for Culture Night different, we said, no, we're going to remain and do what we do every Friday night. So, um, yeah, Culture Night down at the GPO, feeding the homeless. You have people from all different walks of life, and it's embracing each other's culture and food from each other's culture.